Here's the complicated history of Rick Ross and Drake's friendship turned to tension, turned to friendship, and now we're here. Rick Ross talking about Drake's nose job, diss tracks between each other. And before we get there, can we please just take a moment of silence for all of the incredible collabs that we may never see more of? Lord knows. Lemon pepper freestyle. Drake raps at his best when Ross has a verse. Stay scheming. Free spirit, come on. Free spirit might be my favorite out of all these, and I. I will say I don't like Money in the Grave. I, I know a lot of people love it. One of my least favorite Drake songs. I didn't like it. But everything else, incredible. But we got to take it all the way back to 2010. So in 2010, Ross reached out to Drake and allegedly said that he wanted to work together. This was early on. Drake's first album was about to come out. And this is what Drake said. For anyone that doesn't believe in me, your favorite rappers do. They call me for hooks, features, and all that. Rick Ross, Jeezy, for the people that don't believe in me, the people that you do believe in got love for me. That's all that matters. So it was clear that Drake had admiration for Ross, and it meant a lot that he wanted to collab. And it didn't take long. Their first official collab together was Aston Martin Music, which is one of my favorite Drake verses on the full version, which was originally Paris Martin Music. Now, they kept working working together, kept talking about doing joint collab. Let me know in the comments what the best Ross and Drake collab is of all time. But they were cool pretty much up until this happened where Drake and Meek got into it. Back to Back was released. Clearly Drake won that battle. But Ross, who was friends with Drake, was also in business with Meek. MMG was strong, maybe not as strong as in 2012, but it was still a thing. And Ross rode for his boy. Pause, no diddy. We won't go there. Ross actually dropped a subliminal diss track called Color Money, referring to the money in Canada, which where I'm from, it was regular money, okay? But it is different colors than in America. So we all know on Back to Back, Drake said, is that a world tour or your girl tour? To Nicki Minaj's tour that made a lot of money where Meek was an opener. Ross replied to this saying, Color Money, got your B on a world tour. My little homie made a million on his girl tour. Basically saying like, why are you getting mad at Meek? He made some money on that tour. And we back to back and down to whack. An unborn Miami dudes got him changing all the gun laws. So run for us. Got some shooters and they dying too. I got more money than that that you're signed to. The duty signed to Birdman, clearly a shot at him. Clearly a response to uh run for us, run for us, go for us. Man, you already wrote for us. What's one more quote for us? On zero to 100, and clearly a back to back reference there. It was clear who he was going at. Now, Drake actually replied on More Life. A lot of people don't look at this line because it kind of was vague, but he did say, Tell your big homie I'm all for going there again. He ain't even dying. I ball with his inheritance. All that's in my account at the Bank of America. Now, he's clearly referencing the color money thing and saying, no, I have American money too, and we can go back again. He's basically talking to Meek to tell Ross, Meek, tell your boss, Ross. What a rhyme. I'm sure Ross has never used that one before. But he's also basically saying he's balling with Meek's inheritance in the sense that the money Ross would usually give to Meek through the label isn't as strong as it once was because Drake did take a hit to Meek's career. Now keep in mind, the two were super cool for the next few years. They did piece up. Before we get here, Ross said that he actually sat down with Drake due to Jay Prince. Anything Jay Prince requests, you gotta do. No diddy. He said it was really just we wasn't even discussing anything negative because by the time we get in the room, it's so much other things going on that it's already let's get some money. But I had to just make sure we at least sat down to have some sort of understanding. It's all about trying to touch nine figures. And of course, beyond the collabs they've had since then, Ross is always very complimentary of Drake, saying that me and Drizzy, our relationship is most definitely real close. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how much music we got because it's so easy working with the homie. I'm gonna be honest, we in two percentile when it comes to writers and creators. It's called a two percentile. Basically saying he's a top tier writer and creator. Keep in mind the writing part, notable. But this Kendrick like that verse changed everything. Ross was bumping it in his car, playing the Kendrick part and posted it on an IG story. I don't know exactly what the tension was right before this, Hard to say. Drake's reply was classic Drake. He invited Rick Ross's ex to his show, VIP treatment. This isn't the first time that a woman was potentially involved in between them, pause. But on views, it seemed like Drake might have been, might have been addressing Ross. I'm not 100% sure on this. Might have been talking about somebody else. Let me know in the comments if you think so. He said, I brought your wifey out to St. Martin. She violated, I sent her back where it all started. How quick they are to forget about their bachelor apartment. Leave it to dudes like you to show them light in the darkness. A lot of people thought that was about Meek or maybe even Joe Budden. But either way, something happened here to the point where Drake addressed Ross on his diss track to Kendrick, where he says this. Dudes really got me out here talking like I'm 50. 50 is a known enemy of Rick Ross. They've had beef for years. People really got me out here rapping when I'm living. I might take your latest girl and cuff her like I'm Ricky. 
Rick Ross used to be a correctional officer, allegedly, and he's saying he might take your girl, which he might, Officer Ricky. Also, can't believe he jumping in, this dude is turning 50. Could be a reference to Rick Ross jumping in a pool. Every song that made it on the chart he got from Drizzy, they do have a lot of hits together, maybe not everyone, but they have a lot. Spend that little check you got and stay up on my business. Worry about whatever going on with you and we know the name that was supposed to be there, but that line was actually taken out of the CD quality version, so I don't know if it's gonna be on streaming. But either way, Rick Ross replied extremely quickly with champagne moments, pretty much the quickest I've ever seen somebody respond to a diss, especially since this wasn't even the official version that dropped from Drake. He says, Ghostwriters, they get to floss what you could have had. Record label taking a loss. Are you in your bag? You a worker wanted to chart. Don't make me laugh. Get to mine. Tell by my watch. It's a different time. Light shots, but we all know the stuff with Drake and Ghostwriters, but it's funny that Ross uses this line when earlier he called Drake a 2% when it comes to his writing. Living fine, I'm getting high as your sh decline. Speaking they records when we speaking directly, I think he's saying you could have hit my line, but at the same time, there was some clear tension if Rick, not Riss, if Rick Ross was playing Kendrick like that verse in his car and posting it on Instagram. You also didn't have to do that. Always ran, had another dude write your grooves, flow is copy and paste, Wheezy gave you the juice, another white boy at the park, wanna hang with the crew. Again, another ghost writing reference, nothing we haven't heard in disses towards Drake yet. I think it doesn't get interesting till the end of the song. Also weird that he used the Pulitzer Prize winner switching up like die denim because kendrick was the one that won the pulitzer prize i'm interested i i don't fully get that bar if you guys want to explain what the reference is or if he's just referencing kendrick and saying you never had that acclaim i don't know told you stay scheming i predicted my fate drake of course was on rick ross's stay scheming and he addressed his beef with common on that song using ross on the hook so he's basically saying i predicted this the guy was scheming right next to me we have beef right now let you DM my hoe, but I got bees. You can't let you get on my songs. It was good for your faith. Basically saying, you know, he helped Drake by collabing with him. I personally think it was mutual, but there was definitely value in having Ross on those songs. And then there was a clip of Drake talking about how much he respects Ross. But again, I, there's so many clips of Ross saying he respects Drake. So I don't necessarily think that that's the best use of an interlude. The outro is where he really starts to say things. This is where it gets pretty funny. He calls him a white boy, which all I can think about is this. <laughs> he claims that Drake sent a cease and desist towards French Montana over a couple songs that leaked and didn't officially make it. I don't know. I don't know too much about that. You guys can let me know, but I don't really want to dig into it. But then he talks about his nose and also him getting a tummy tuck, which Joe Budden actually initially brought to light years ago. And I was kind of waiting for someone to, to bring it up in diss songs, but he said he saw Dr. Miami and didn't tell you a hip hop weird now. And the bar that Joe had was, yeah, Aubrey, that's the one we trusted. Not this new Aubrey with his stomach sculpted. But yeah, that was Rick Ross's bar. And then he ends it off by calling him a white boy. Drake responded with this text thread with him and his mom, which was hilarious. He said that Ross hadn't eaten in days and it's turned him angry and racist. But yeah, this is only the beginning of this. Clearly, what do you guys think is going to happen? Will we ever see peace between them? Will Drake respond? Will Ross respond? I'm sure there's going to be more by the time you watch this because this is ongoing. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Appreciate you. And uh, yeah, open for peace.